Hello, my name is Paige Rue and I live in Columbia, South Carolina with my husband, Fred. We've been married for 31 years and have four wonderful kids, James, Will, Mark, and Elizabeth, ages 28 to 19. Technically, I was diagnosed in May of 2018. I was 54, but my story really started several months earlier. I have always been quite active and for the most part healthy, but in November of 2017, I started having occasional digestive issues. In December, I started having shoulder and some upper right chest pain. I saw my family doctor just before Christmas and he took an x-ray and an EKG. Everything seemed to be okay. Normally, I love to shop for Christmas, but looking back, I was not quite as energetic as normal. I kept making excuses for all my symptoms. I'm over 50, I'm busy, etc. Three months later, I was helping my son move to a new apartment in Arlington, Virginia. Once again, my energy level was not quite there. And on the return flight, after having a Five Guys burger and some fries, I started feeling very, very uncomfortable. That night, I decided to make an appointment with my family doctor. It took a couple of days to get in, but um, and I actually started feeling better. My doctor thought for sure it was my gallbladder but said he needed to do an ultrasound before surgery, before he could schedule surgery. The next day I had an ultrasound and a few hours later, I received a call from my doctor saying my gallbladder was okay, but there was a suspicious spot on my liver, but he said not to worry yet. The following day, I had a CT with the same concerns followed by an MRI. It too showed something unusual and they suggested a needle biopsy. With the assistance of my husband's cousin, Dr. Marshall Baker, we were referred to the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston for further work. I had more scans there and a needle biopsy. The next week, I was back in Charleston watching my daughter play soccer when I received a call from my doctor. I excused myself from the group of parents watching the game and made my way to the top of the bleachers. Standing on the top row of the bleachers, staring at the setting sun, looking over the Charleston Harbor, I heard the words we've all heard. Paige, I'm sorry to tell you, but you have intrahepatic blah, blah, blah carcinoma. As we say in the South, I said, pardon me, could you please say that again and spell it for me? Stunned, I made my way back to the other parents as the game ended and we headed to the car. My daughter and son, knew something up was up as we'd started to drive home. The next couple of minutes were the hardest part of my journey so far. We had to pull the car over a couple of miles down the road and tell my two youngest kids that I had cancer. I had felt this way before when in 2013, I had to tell them their older brother, Will, at the age of 19, had died in an automobile accident. I will never forget the look in my daughter's eyes as she cried uncontrollably and screamed, why, why, why again does something like this have to happen to us? Followed by, it's just not fair. Gut-wrenching emotional feelings that I know all of us have experienced on our journeys. After we wiped our tears, we knew we were going to fight and fight hard. I am thankful for the family and friends that started this this fight with me and for their unwavering support. During my battle, I never had to worry about any details of life except for doing what I needed to do to fight this cancer. This was the beginning of what we call Team Page. The tumor board at MUSC reviewed my case and determined it was not operable. They referred me to a local oncologist for treatment of gym cysts. My local oncologist was not 100% sure I had cholangiocarcinoma, thinking that possibly the cancer started somewhere else and spread to my liver. To be sure, he ordered a colonoscopy, endoscopy, breast ultrasound, and a, um, a check for cervical cancer. All were negative. It appears a lot of cancers are of an unknown origin. The days that followed were a blur as I prepared for chemo. One point worth noting is my decision to get my port in my arm. The morning of my surgery, the doctor gave me a choice to have the port in my chest or arm. I never heard of another option besides the chest, 
but looking back, I'm glad to have it in my arm and found that not many others knew about this option either. To be honest, my oncologist was not overly optimistic. He had only treated one other cholangiocarcinoma patient with an outcome I was not a fan of. We prepared for treatment locally, but began to consider second opinions at major cancer centers. As we all know, the internet is full of bad news when it comes to cholangiocarcinoma, but we stumbled across the Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation website and left a voicemail with the patient advocate department. I received my first week of chemo and the side effects were brutal. The fatigue was horrible and I did not have much of an appetite except for fruit, especially strawberries and bananas. Friday was not a good day. I was sitting in my chair feeling bad, lonely, and scared. I heard my husband answer the phone. He was quiet for a while and then he walked into our room with tears in his eyes and his voice cracking. He asked the party on the other end if, he, if she could repeat what she had just told him. He gave me the phone and that is when I met Melinda Bikini and started to feel hopeful for the first time in a long time. The following day, another angel came into my life, Lisa Crane, patient mentor for the Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation. She took my hand and helped me on my way. We decided to reach out to MD Anderson and we, with Lisa's help, we got an appointment in August with Dr. Millen Jobley. If you don't know it by now, Dr. Jobley is known worldwide for treatment of cholangiocarcinoma. Four months into my gymsis treatment, we saw Dr. Jobley in Houston. The place is big, but boy, is it well run. It is very patient-centered and even better than I expected. Five minutes after Dr. Jave looked at my scans, he turned to me and said, Paige, has anybody mentioned resection? I could have hugged and kissed him right there. Team Paige grew. With this news, we explored surgical options. As luck would have it, Dr. Marshall Baker, who happens to be related to my husband and also to be related to my husband, also helped me early on in my diagnosis, is married to Dr. Talia Baker at the University of Chicago Medicine. She works with Dr. John Fung, also at the University of Chicago Medicine, probably two of the best liver surgeons in the world. Both were able to see me and operate on me within three weeks time. Team Page grew more. Here is an approximate timeline from there. On September 18th, 2018, I had a liver resection, right lobe, approximately 70% of my liver removed, along with several lymph nodes. Foundation testing was done. I had post-surgical systemic mop-up therapy with six months of Zolota and gemcitabine. I returned to Houston every three months for scans. The summer of 2019 was good, except a blood clot was detected. I was off treatment, but August scans showed a small suspicious spot on my diaphragm. removed what he described as a receding of the original tumor. Team page grew. Foundation testing done again. Post-surgery treatment in October of 2019 was four months of modified full fox. I carried that little black bagalini around each week and was glad to give it back to my chemo nurse each time. In February of 2020, a few questionable nodes surfaced in the original site. Dr. Jobley said we could watch or biopsy, decided to biopsy and they came back positive. Next was four months of gemsis plus Abraxan. Some improvement was noted, but Dr. Jobley thought radiation was the next best step. IMRT, Intensity Modulated Radiation Therapy. So that brings us up to now. Courtesy of one of our presenters this year, Dr. Eugene Coy at MD Anderson, team page grew even more. I just finished 25 treatments of IMRT on July 2nd. I found it for August 17th. I'm not sure what is next, but as Dr. Jobley said early on, Paige, my dear, fighting this disease is like the old whack-a-mole game. As one thing pops up, we beat it back down and keep moving on. My journey so far has had many highs and lows. 
Here are a few pictures over the last two years. A lot of doctor's appointments, shots twice a day for a blood clot, CT scans, PET scans, chemo, surgeries, and really just feeling bad at times. But I also had a lot of good times with my family and friends. We had vacations, birthdays, graduations, and weddings. Even through the highs and lows, I continue to have faith, hope, and love. I love more each day I am given. So how do I do that? Or how might you do that? I don't really have an answer, as I mentioned earlier, when we lost our, our son Will in 2013. We somehow got stronger as a family. We rallied behind the phrase. And my prayer for all of us is that we never lose our will. May God bless each of us in this fight. Thank you.